what we see here now is a four-point advantage for Kamala Harris over Donald Trump. You look last month, it was the exact same thing. So you're seeing consistency among the New York Times Siena College poll. Why is that so important to me? Because given the sort of controversy around polling over the last few years, I want to look at the pollsters who have been most accurate. And if you look at the New York Times Siena College poll back in the 2022 Senate race, what you saw was the result was John Fetterman, the Democrat, by five points, and the final New York Times Siena College poll had John Fetterman ahead by five points. So a very accurate pollster back in 2022 showing a consistent, small, but consistent advantage for Kamala Harris in the state that might prove to be the most pivotal. So we've talked a lot about all this new swing state polling has come out in the last 24 hours. There are a couple polls from not really swing states, but polls that I think you think tell an important story. Absolutely. You know, one of the things that was so notable about the New York Times poll was Harris was ahead by five in a state that Joe Biden only won by one point. So an overperformance, she's outperforming Biden's margin by three points. And let's take a look at some other pollsters who not just got 2022 right, but who got 2020 right, which a lot of pollsters did not. So let's go to Iowa, right? Ann Sells are one of the best pollsters in the business. You go back to her final poll in 2020, she had Donald Trump ahead by seven points. He ended up winning in Iowa by eight. Look at where she has the race right now, a poll that was released just on Sunday. Donald Trump ahead, but just by four. So Kamala Harris is doing three points better than Joe Biden did in the final poll back in 2020. How about in New Hampshire, the UNH poll? Again, this poll was within a point, the final one in 2020. It had Joe Biden winning by eight in the uh, Granite State. He won by seven. Look at where Kamala Harris is ahead by. She's ahead by 11 points. So a three-point overperformance. Again, the same as we saw in Iowa, the same that we see in New Hampshire, very consistent with the three-point overperformance that we see, or the four-point overperformance, the three-point overperformance that we see in, of course, Pennsylvania in terms of the New York Times Siena College Bowl versus the 2020 results. Always looking for trends. I think that's what you're doing, and that's why this is all important, why we appreciate the lessons you give us. Talk to us about the difference between some of these northern swing states and the southern ones. Right, so these are all northern states, right? New Hampshire, Iowa, and of course, Pennsylvania. And so if we right now look, Harris versus Trump in the battlegrounds margin, you look in the northern battlegrounds, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, what we see is Harris up by three. If you look in the Sun Belt battleground states, Arizona, Georgia, Nevada, and North Carolina, we see a tide race. So Harris doing better in those northern battleground states than she's doing in those southern battleground states. And again, John, so pivotal, the electoral map, the race to 270. Even if Harris loses, say in North Carolina and Georgia, and then in Nevada and Arizona, if she carries these Great Lake battleground states up here, Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin, that gets her to exactly 270 electoral votes. So the bottom line is this good polling for Kamala Harris in these northern battleground states may be just enough to get her over the top in the electoral college. It is a path to 270. It is a path. All right, Harriet, and thank you very much. Thank you. Okay.